Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I've had a number of people ask about information or resources to create structured data templates, like I've shown in some of my other videos. So we're gonna go through that today. And this will show the several options that are available when you're creating structured data templates and why you might want to do so. I'm going to do this in the HPI, but you could do this in any section of ECW that allows custom templates. You have to do this in the main HPI. You can't do this through the inline editing. Now, when you open up your HPI window, you may have your settings configured so that it opens the entire window up for typing or dictating. You'll need to click here to shrink that back down so you can see the other options available. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose one of our sections that we don't typically use in our production environment. I'm going to use neurosurgery consultations because we don't have neurosurgeons. And I'm going to choose investigational studies as the section where I want to create this template. Now I can see the things currently available in investigational studies. I'm going to ignore those because they don't really matter for this, but you see the custom button. That's what we're going to use. If you don't see the custom button or if it's grayed out, that means you don't have the security privileges to do custom template creation and you'll need to talk to your system administrator to get these enabled on your account. Once you have that, go ahead and click custom and you'll see the same list that we just saw but we're going to add a new one and I'm gonna call it template examples and simply hit okay. Now we can see it down here and it looks the same as all these others, but here's the key. Up here, this is the structured column. So I click structured, save the structured tag and hit okay. Now, when you look down here, you can see there's this little S that's for structured and that makes it different than the rest of these. So now when I click to open template examples, there is nothing here. So we're going to make a few of them. And the key here again is we're going to now use another custom button that appears. Again, if you don't see it, you're probably not gonna make it to this window, but you need to be able to see this button and use it. So we're gonna click it and it will allow us to make our first option. And here we have either the grid or the wizard. I typically use the grid and we're going to add our first section. Here we can give it a name most important is the type of structured data this is. And you can see there's six of them, structured text, numeric, date, Boolean, date, and date. They really like the date examples, uh, but they give you a different calendar option that you can click on. We're going to do structured text because I think that one's the most helpful most of the time. So we'll choose structured. And we're going to, in this case, do just some standard HPI questions. Now up here on the name, this is where you have the actual stem of the question that you're wanting to ask. So let's say the question is going to be how long the person's been having symptoms. In this case, I'm going to write the question stem here in the name to be the first part of the question. And then their answer will be in the structured text, which I'll show you in a moment. The symptoms have been present for, in this case, we're gonna do structured text, which means to choose from a list. And we're going to give some examples here like an hour a day, a month, a year. So in this case, we only want them to be able to select one option. So we're not going to click multi-select. If we did multi-select, they could click multiple options. And that makes sense if you're picking multiple diagnoses. But here we're asking about a time. We're going to leave this unchecked. You can make it mandatory, which means people can't get out of this section until they answer it. I would typically not recommend that. And then there are some default answers you can choose from in some of the other types. So we're going to click OK. And now we're left with the symptoms have been present for. This is a structured text, which means we're going to make a list of text answers. So to do so, we've got this section highlighted. It's the only section right now. We're going to click Customize Structured Text. This is where you make the list of how long this has been going on for. And we're just going to make a list. And I've added several of these a few hours all the way to all year. So as you think about this, this is going to write out on your note, the symptoms have been present for, and then you click this, it's gonna give one of those answers. By the way, we can click one of them as a default if we want. You don't have to, but you can. You can always garbage can it, or you can go change it if you don't like the name, and continue as long of a list as you want. So I'm gonna leave it like this. Now we've created this first question with a structured text list to choose from. We're gonna do it again, but with multi-select, so you can see how that works. So we'll add another one. 
we'll say the main symptoms include. And here we're going to make another structured list in a minute, but in this case, we're going to do multi-select because it makes sense that a person could give multiple symptoms. We'll go ahead and hit multi-select and close this. Now I've got our next one. Main symptoms include, notice this is structured text, and if you hover, it says multi-select is enabled. So I'm going to have this highlighted. I'm going to click the structured text list, and we're going to make a new list here of just some common symptoms. So we're going to put four of them on here. And you could continue doing this. A little bit later, I'll show you my urinary tract infection template that I use quite frequently. But let's do some of the other types. So we're going to add another one. And in this case, instead of doing structured text, let's do something numeric. And we'll give a different example here of what is the patient's favorite number. Now that doesn't really make sense in an office visit, but it's to give an example of something where you may want to require that only numbers are given. And in this case, I wrote it as a question with an answer to follow rather than it making up one sentence. So that's added there, and you'll see how this works in a minute when we open this in an actual progress note. Let's add another one, and we will say the date on which this began, and we're going to make that date. And just for some more comparison, the date, something else began. In this case, we'll make it the month year date, and again, the date change this to the date which is just the year. And you can see I've got these three different date options. Honestly I don't know why they give you this many options on dates but there you go. And finally we're going to do a little bit more of an expanded template option with boolean operators meaning ands and ors. And this one can let you build actually more complex templates which you can get branching logic based on how the patient answers. So I'll add one here this one I'm going to do screening for sexually transmitted infections. And we're going to make this one Boolean. And the default is going to be no. Okay. Now, the key on this is once you've got the screening for STIs Boolean option, you can click on here to add a child structure. So this is where, depending on if the answer yes or no on the screening for STIs, you can have different options. So we're going to say that they've had screening and they answered yes. So we say, which ones have you had? And in this case, we're going to make a list of them. And we're going to make a multi-select. Maybe they had more than one. And the trigger is if they answer yes. Now you can see that gives us this answer here. But we actually haven't actually made the list. So we're going to click on structured text, multi-select. Now we're going to make a list of a few of the STIs. So we'll add a couple of those on there. And now let's do one more child, meaning one that answers below the screening for STI. So we click on the little plus here. So we'll say, do you currently use birth control or protection? And again, this is going to be a trigger. We're going to say, if it's screened for STIs, we'll have this uh, trigger be Yes. And that's not multi-select because we don't want it. And in this case, we're going to make it Boolean. We're going to say the default here is no. So that the default answer on do use birth control or protection is no. Okay. I'm going to close this. And we're left back at this screen, which shows the different questions that we've made. Now, if I hit OK, then we're left back down here on this original page. And if I were just to go from this screen and click on here, if I click in this line anywhere, it's going to open this screen up. But this is a very awkward way to enter this. You know, I'd, I'd have to click this, and you know, I might find this answer here, and then I'd have to click this and check this answer and this answer, and you know, the favorite number. When I click that, it brings up this number pad. Now, you can do that, but that doesn't save you any time at all. Instead, what you want to do is we will clear these out. We'll clear all of these out. And now, 
what you want to do is answer one question. You can answer more, but just literally answer one question. We're going to make it a few hours, and we're going to close it, and we're going to come back to our HPI. Now you can see on the HPI under the section Investigational Studies, we've got the, the category of template examples, and we've got this one question. The way ECW does things is as long as you have at least one question with an answer, even if it's not the answer you always want, but if you have one answer, then this will show up. Here's the key and here's the power is when you click anywhere on this black template line, it will bring up all the questions that we just made into one screen. So here you quickly scroll through and click here and here. Notice that when I click this, it unchecks the other ones because this doesn't allow multi-select. This is only the symptoms have been present for one specific period of time. Whereas this question, multi -sym uh, main symptoms include, you might have multiple symptoms, so that makes sense. And here, you get a little drop down, or you can pick their favorite number. And here, you can get a date of April 2nd. So the regular date will give you month, day, year, or you can pick one that just lets you do the month and year or just the year, in case you really have a specific reason to want that. Let's click on the screening for STIs. I click yes. Notice that it pops up those child questions. Which STIs? And I can multi-select in case there's been more than one. Use birth control, yes or no. That one's not multi-select because either you are or you aren't. If I click no, then those answers go away. And I could build another child underneath that one, which triggers to no. So let's go back and look at these now. We'll close it. And you can see here it fills in the answers that I gave. If you click on the green, then it brings us back here. And again, you have to hit custom to actually go in and edit things. So on screening for STIs, let's do one more where there's a no trigger. I'm going to click on screening for STIs. I'm going to click the plus to add a child. In this case, would you like to be screened today? And we'll make this some Boolean as well because it's a yes or no. And this one, we're going to say the trigger is no because we're going to ask them this if they haven't been screened. We're not going to make it mandatory. So now you can see for the screening for STIs, it asks, it's Boolean, so the answer will be yes or no. If the answer is yes, these two child answers options will show up. If you answer no, then this one will. So let's see how that works. So we will we'll close back to our HPI. We go ahead and we click anywhere in this black text and it brings all of this up. Now in this case, I suppose I clicked yes and there's the which STIs. Are you using birth control? Yes or no. If I click no, then it says, would you like to be screened today? Let's go back and fix that because I had the wrong data type on there. So I'm screening for STIs. Go to custom. And here's the mistake you can see that I made. I left the data type on date. That's not what I want. We need to go edit it. Click your little pencil and paper, edit, change to Boolean, which means you can only answer yes or no. So go here, save it, go back to progress note. And when I click on it, you can see screening for STIs, yes, gives you those answers. No, gives you this one. And now I can answer, do I want to be screened today or not? Click OK. And there we are. So that template doesn't really make sense in any note that you would ever use, but that gives you some ideas on how you can create your own custom structured templates, including branching logic when a patient answers yes or no. Let me give you an example of this on one of my favorite templates, which I have called my UTI with hematuria template. It's called that because you'll see I have another one without hematuria because these both add a diagnosis and it's a slightly different diagnosis code with or without hematuria. So let's go ahead and pull in this one with hematuria. We'll hit our left arrow over and we'll pull it in and you can see it just added this section called UTI. Now, when I saved this template, I went through and I answered these questions in this way. Of course, they're not going to be perfect for everyone with a UTI, but it's pretty close. But I'm going to have to change a few answers. So here's the key. 
rather than me clicking on the green and going in and manually changing these one at a time, which is very tedious and I don't recommend ever doing it, I can just click anywhere in this black text. Again, even if there was just one line answered, I could click on it and it brings up this template that has all of my answers. Now, most of these are structured text, meaning they're, they're drawn from a list. And you can go through and check any of the ones that you want. If you leave it unchecked, then that section just won't show up on it on the progress note. And you can see one of those sections is gone about have they had prior UTIs. I realize that I do want to have that on there, so I just go back to it. And I click that they have occasional UTIs and I hit OK. So this top template example just gives usage examples of all the different types of structured data formats that you can use. You can think about where you would want to use them. I think you'll find most of the time that you're using a structured list, uh, which is what every one of these are. I wrote the name here as the first part of the question, and then the answers are here uh, on all of these. But I could put in one of the numbers instead if I wanted to say the symptoms have been present for how many days, and then put a number pad here, but that seems like more work than just putting in a list here of a few days. You will discover as you do this that it's a little bit tricky deciding how to write the first part of the question and then each of the answers so that it lines up and makes sense as a sentence. And again, you can always click on this blank field over here uh, where you can add anything else. In case there's something that's not on your standard list here of symptoms of the UTI in this case, you could always click on here and add that one of their symptoms are green kidney stones because that's never going to be on a structured list i don't think and when i close it you can see that the main symptoms include all of these and green kidney stones so hopefully that's helpful for you and you can see how you would make a structured data template what i would suggest is make a template like the one that i have made here that suits your purposes and then go ahead and save it with at least one question answered and then save it as a template as a favorite over here so you can just pull it in with the left arrow and then you can click on the black text that pulls in and then you can edit and change it however you want with all of your questions on one screen and this is easily the fastest way to do these types of visits especially the common ones that you do over and over hopefully that was helpful let me know in the comments below